So be aware of the stillness of your body. Be aware of the stillness around the world. Be aware of that stillness, a collective stillness among all the meditators this moment participating with us here. Feel the support that we all are supporting each other to find our deepest stillness. Where we find calm, quiet, peaceful and safe. Now, be aware of the silence within. Hear and feel the silence within. Be aware of this collective silence among all the practitioners around the world that we are connected through this stillness and silence which you are being aware this moment. Be aware of the spaciousness of your mind and your heart. And those you feel difficult to be aware of the spaciousness of your heart and mind. Imagine a crystal clear sky in the desert. Imagine being the clear sky. You are that clear sky. We all are that clear sky.
Imagine and feel the presence of Sharapchama, a wisdom loving mother, a sky in front of us. She's golden. ornamented by beautiful, peaceful ornaments, embodies love and wisdom, just like a mother, a loving, kind mother to all the sentient beings. Feel her presence, a sky in front of us, facing us. Feel our collective presence of her and the collective presence of each other. We all are connected. Those who are not familiar, you can imagine the one appears on the screen. We will all sing the mantra together. And those who are not familiar with the mantra and you prefer to sit more quiet, you can do that also. Just being aware and feeling the recitation of this mantra around the world. Feel that vibration, the blessings, prayers in your body in your breath, in your deep consciousness. Om Ava Made Mahe Moha Ema Ho Maye Raba Yena Nanda Oh, uh, yeah, no. Nah. 
Just feel and be aware of her presence in the sky in front of us and feel her blessings in your body, in your breath, in your deep consciousness. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, I will explain a little bit the topic about shifting our pain identity. And then later we will have another uh, opportunity to do a short session of meditation. So generally, if you look Every pain that we experience, every single pain that we experience in our life, or every single pain that we have experienced in the past, or you are pres experiencing in the present moment, or the one which you will experience in the future, they all are related to one single thing. One single thing for everybody is the same. It's called Dangzi, a self-grasping mind, or it's an ego, or you can call it, in this case, pain identity. You identify with the pain. So as I'm speaking, I want all of you to not just listen from intellectually or trying to analyze what I'm saying or trying to even worse judging what I'm saying or not listening at all. What you wanted to do is you wanted to focus within yourself to see what this means to you. What is your pain identity? What was your pain identity? Whatever was your pain identity, how much suffering it has caused in you? What is your pain identity in this moment? It is causing pain in you. So this, this is a basically a very simple a sense of self the way I feel myself, who I am. What is that to you this moment? How, do, how we know what is that in this moment or this moment in our life? How we know is simply look at your pain. The pain that you are experiencing now, the pain you have experiencing experienced in the past, you look at that very closely. Behind that pain, 
or the deep inside that, that, that pain, there's a deep sense of I waiting to be seen, waiting to be awakened, waiting to be illuminated, waiting to be guided, and fe feeling need to be totally free from its own prison of pain. Can you be aware at this moment? Can you feel your pain this moment, pain identity, either it's individual or collective? I feel pain. We feel pain. We too feel pain. We all feel pain. I alone feel pain. Look at that pain. Deep inside, there is a sense of I. I, which is very strong, identify with a specific role. What you do. It's very specifically identify with what you wish you wanted to do. It is specifically identify with a sense of who you wanted to be. An ideal, a sense of self. Who is that? For example, a mother, a father, as a parent, when you suffer, it's a very a specific kind of suffering. Only parents know. Monks do not know that. Nuns do not know that. Singles have no clue about it. A parents, what I mean by singles who no clue about it, the one who don't have a children will not know about it. If you are one of them, you look at yourself. I am talking to you. You're trying to, if you are experiencing pain, you look at your sense of self. Deep inside there is, I am a mother. I am a father. I love my children. I wish my children do this, don't do that. I wish they live this kind of life, not that kind of life. It's the parent in you, it's the mother in you, the father in you, it's suffering. Why you are suffering with that? Because you overly identify with that role of the mother or role of the father. That's why you are suffering. That's why you are feeling conflict with the children. That's why you are not able to give the warmth, love and peace that you wanted to give to your children. That's why you are not able to give some clear guidance to them. That's why you don't even feel closeness to them. That's why you feel they're avoiding you. That's why you feel there's a disconnect between you and your children. It all goes back to one single thing, identifying with that role of father and mother. Not just identifying, identifying too much. My definition of too much is too much where it creates pain, conflict, disconnectedness. So if you are that person, I'm talking to you. I just want 
for you to recognize that you are overly identifying with that role. And you are not only a father, you are not only a mother, you are more than that. I want you to just have a sense of that, a feeling of that. Yes, I am just more than that. You are trying, maybe some of you, you are trying to protect something. You are trying to take care of somebody. You are trying to love somebody. Or you are trying to give some, something to somebody. But you are also overly identifying with that role of protector a role of who is controlling it just be aware that you cannot control it forever or you can you are not only the one who should control it you are not only one who is responsible for it Or maybe you are where you are taking in charge, where you are controlling it, you are over controlling it. There is no space for movement, freedom, flow, flexibility, creativity, because you are controlling that control occupying a space in which you are suffocating and you are suffocating other people too. Simply recognize that pain identity, a need to control. Just simply recognize you have a need to control. It has nothing so much to do with trying to do something better, perfect or even ethical or generous action. It's more there's a need to control. And that need has something to do with your inner pain that you are identifying with it. Simply recognizing, yes, it's true, it's not what I, about what I'm trying to do out there. I can feel it. I need it. It's my need. It's my pain. It's my pain identity. And I need to, to shift it. How do I do it? You can also try to control that feeling, trying to be in charge of that feeling and do the same mistake again. You don't do that. You don't try to control your feeling. You don't try to control your thought. You cannot. But you can do, be aware of it. Be aware that the, it's, it's the need of your mind to control, which is producing the pain and conflict and blockages in the flow of some creative action. So if you are not the parent, but if you are this one who is trying to control, then for you, I want you to be simply be aware that you are, you have a need to control, that, that need is your pain, your pain identity. So if you look, the sense of identity, I will just make it up 
in three categories. A. It's too much identifying with the role. Second, like a medium identifying with the role. Third, less identifying with the role. Just look at three possible experiences that we have in our everyday life. The first extreme, when we too much identify with our pain, very often people destroy themselves and others. It's a collective and self-destruction because it can never figure out to come out of it because it's gone too far, too far. Of course, there's always possible to come back, but in some cases, they lose that opportunity and, and destroy. There's a collective destruction. Middling is where when you are identifying with the role, not the first extreme, but in the middle, then what happened is very often you feel a lot of conflict in life. You feel conflict within yourself. You feel conflict within the situation that your life is living. You feel conflict with the situation, people that you are participating, whatever role that you are participating with the people. You feel a lot of conflict around, within and between each other. Because once again, you are also identifying a, or quite a lot with the role that you have. Every time when we do that, we feel pain. We just feel pain of identifying with those roles, identifying with unfulfilled those roles, identifying with those wishful thinking. Identifying with those pain. Then the last one, the third, will be, of course, there's no way in this world, in this samsara, not identifying with the pain. A definition of samsara or definition of korwa, it says, Dangzi wangke dungal dan cheba. The one who possess discomfort or pain as a result of grasping mind. As a possessor, we are samsaric being. We say sim chen. Every pain, its outcome or fruition of grasping mind. As I said earlier, there's no way not to have grasping mind. We do. But when you have a minimum, you feel less pain within yourself, less conflict within yourself more space within yourself, more flow within yourself, more awareness within yourself, less pain in relation to the situation, whatever you're trying to do, like your work. You feel less pain with your work. You feel less pain with people who you're working with. You feel less pain with people who are in relationship with. You have feel less pain with your family members because you're not identifying too much with your pain or with that role. So maybe the big question is why we do identify with something like that? Why we identify with our role? Why we identify with our pain? Why we identify with somebody who we, who we are not? 
Well, answer is very simple. You don't have an option. Because you, if you're not able to be aware who you are, then only option is to identify with somebody who you are not. It's not an option. We just do it. We don't even, we are not even conscious that we are doing it. Every second, every moment, every situation, every relationship, even to God, to deity, to teachers, to spiritual guide, we can identify with our own pain and need and, and mess up some of those very special relationships because that sacred relationship is mixed with our own pain. So how do we overcome? When we are able to, when we are able to, are conscious of who we are, a moment, even closer to that experience, it began to shift something inside us. How do you do that? How it can happen? Of course, it's not that easy. It's not that very difficult either. It is always about, are you ready? Are you mature? Are you ripen? When you're ready, when you're mature, when you're ripen, nothing can stop you. But when you are not, it's very hard. If the cave is facing north, sun is shining unbiasedly every direction, but the cave which is facing north does not get the sunlight. Not because sun has bias or not shining in that cave, but it's facing in the wrong direction. So what will be what will make easier to shift that pain identity? Obviously, it's very simple again. Whenever you feel your pain body or your pain speech or your pain mind is active, like when you're feeling a sense of that identity, deep, deep, deep pain, feeling pain, but you recognize deeply, it's very clearly connected with the sense of specific identity, like I'm a father, therefore I'm feeling pain of my father. When you recognize that. A moment when I'm complaining about some situation, particularly to my loved ones, which has nothing to do with them or the situation, it's just uncontrolled expression of my own awakened pain that moment. It's expressing through the speech, unconscious speech. It's coming out. I did not plan. I did not choose those vocabulary. I did not choose those tone of voice. I did not choose to speak that loud. I did not choose to speak that shaky. I did not choose to speak that ungrounded way. but I'm doing it because my pain speech is awakened. When my pain mind is awakened, I did not choose to have these crazy, crazy thoughts. I'm glad nobody is watching my thought. I'm glad most of these people don't know what I'm thinking. I'm glad my famous people don't know what I'm thinking. I'm glad to know this person who hates me does not know what I'm thinking this moment. But even I don't know why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking. Uncontrolled imagination of pain mind is active. 
uncontrolled. What I do? Just be conscious. A conscious that these thoughts are crazy. These thoughts are not really mind thoughts. These thoughts are coming from my inner pain of mind. These voices are coming from my pain speech. These aches are coming from my pain body, whatever. Just be conscious of that. And you're trying to rest. Like this moment, if any of you are feeling active or pain body, speech or mind, be conscious. that it has nothing to do with this situation, it's just active. Be still. Be silence. Be spacious and allow what you are experiencing. Like a Sharab Chama, like a mother who is so open, wise kind, compassionate, and child is going through pain and expressing pain by jumping around or screaming, crazy imaginations. But what mother does, not go crazy like a child, but host, give a space, give a protection, give acknowledgement, give sense of presence, a sacred present. Those crazy manifestation feels that space, feels that sacred presence, feels that kindness, feels that awareness. And gradually, these crazy manifestation exhaust itself in that pure space, in that absolute silence, in that pure spaciousness of heart, it dissolves. In the end, there is very genuine, very natural sense of stillness, silence you experience. That moment you have shift, shifted your pain identity to a stillness. Your pain identity or your pain body into a stillness. Pain speech into a silence. Pain mind or imagination into a spaciousness. It's free now. It's calm. It's connected. It's feeling peace. It's feeling rest. It's feeling deep inner healing. Pain identity, shifting a pain identity, as I said earlier, every single pain is connected to a sense of self. Just imagine, you know, in our everyday life, that we live around the world, everybody don't live in the same lifestyle, not same job, not same places, not same social or economical 
situations. Now, because of that, if you look at different situations, if you are not one of those politicians, then you don't have the political pain. Sometimes you go to, in, in the middle of these politics, you can feel deep pain, collective pain. You can feel individual pains. Even if it's not yours, you can feel theirs because they are feeling political pain, deep suffering. You are not feeling that because you are not a politician. You are not identifying that same way. Why we are end up doing so many bad things? Or why we end up creating a lot of pain in others? Why we create pain in people who we love? We don't intend to. We don't intend to give pain to your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your children your partner, your husband, your wife, to the neighbor, to strangers, people in the street, never met before, probably will never meet again. You have a moment of encounter. You, you give a glimpse of pain to somebody just the way you look at somebody. I go in a cafe here in Albany, California, in the mornings. In fact, this morning I was there. So one this guy in the cafe, a couple of weeks ago, I was a little bit annoyed by him. Just the way he is, we c no good service, what we think about. Yes. So no good service service of providing your coffee or your tea, whatever you're having. I felt that annoyed. After I felt that, I immediately recognized what I was feeling about him. I felt that he was not being nice. He could have been nicer. He could have served better. I have all those thoughts going in my head. I just recognize, apart from what I think that was a right, but it was also my need to be served properly. I've, I was focused more on my need and I was not conscious about him. When I was aware of that, immediately I felt, felt a release of that feeling. I saw him better. I saw him and I tried to see him. I saw him, he's in pain. Very intense looking guy. You can see his eye is full pain. Body posture looked a lot of pain. A young, he's not old, or doesn't even look sick or anything like that, just by intense pain. It's alive. It's, ex it's expressing it all the time. But now, every time I go and I get my coffee, I try to give space, hose. I'm not trying to be a f become a friend with him. I'm not trying to have a lot of conversation with him. But I am just giving us some space, some warmth, a few seconds of interaction, exchange of money, tea, coffee, 
That's it. There is a sense of recognition and acknowledgement there. We don't have to become a friend. But I have some recognition of him as a result of my own and being in touch with my own pain. Instead of sitting in my own pain and continuing with thoughts, the thinkings. So be aware every moment when you encounter your own inner pain, pain identity and just be conscious. Just directly be aware of that. Recognize it. that it has nothing to do with the other person. It has nothing to do with the situation. It simply activated my own pain. I know like in the West, in the, in the Tibetan tradition, we talk about, very often we talk about Wangpo uh, Rap Ding Tama, like which means a superior capacity or practitioner or middling practitioner or inferior practitioner or something like that. It is somehow translated that way, which is doesn't look very popular in, in the West, you know. But that's what it is. So if you don't like to be called inferior practitioner, I'll give you a suggestion. That's, that's something that you could do. Whenever there is a conflict in life with somebody, whenever you face deep pain within yourself, immediately we think, where does it coming from? Very often you immediately think, of course it's not me, it's the other person. My famous person, it's my father, it's my mother, it's my husband, it's my ex, it's my wife, it's my children, it's... It's my boss, it's the situation, it's not me. Immediately we think that, automatically we think that. So recognize that whenever you think 100% your problem it has something to do with somebody else, you are inferior practitioner. I repeat this again for fun. Some of you might not like it, but it's still for fun. That whenever you think your own pain and conflict, it has something, 100%, it has something to do with the outside you or other person, then you can think about, oh, that's what I'm doing right now, this moment, so I must be inferior practitioner. Or when you say, oh, I'm experiencing this pain, this conflict with this person, but it's us. Us. It's him and me, it's her and me, it's them and me, it's the situation and me. It's a collective thing. Together, we have to figure out solution. If you approach your problem that way, if you approach your pain that way, then you can consider yourself as a middling practitioner. You can say, oh, I'm doing this. I'm trying to make this situation 50-50. So I must be a middling practitioner, a medium practitioner, not the best, not the worst, but the medium one. But if you think it has nothing to do with anybody, because everything, what I see, what I feel, I have created them. It's my projection of mind. It's my mind. It's my consciousness, the only thing what is there. It's just me. It's just me. Vision is mind. It's just my mind. 
It's just me. It's just me, my mind, which is just empty. It's even nothing. It's Let's not go into nothing. But when you think it's only me have created, then when you begin to think like that, you can say, well, wonderful. I am a superior practitioner. But not stay, sit with it too long with that thought. Otherwise, you immediately become middling or worse one. But at least some recognition of saying, you're not trying to blame anybody. You're not even... It's just you're trying to recognize that you're projecting something from in, from within to out. Because every single pain we create, every moment that you have opportunity to not create one, by recognize, recognizing that you are creating or you are about to create one, you will overcome that pain and not create another one for yourself and other people. Okay, so for a moment, I will um, give a little space. We will recite the uh, Shirab Chama Mantra. I will uh, bring her presence in a collective space, in this uh, sacred cyber space, that, uh, a collective space that we are all sharing, that we are not fully aware how it works. In that space, the pre feel the presence of Sharab Chama, which means a wisdom-loving mother, which means feeling so much space from her and so much warmth from her, feeling in us, feeling in your body, feeling in your breath, that every single breath you're breathing in and out, feeling her energy of warmth presence there, feeling any movement of your consciousness, your mind, imagination, feeling her presence in that mind as we recite the Shirab Chama. And also, if there are any a spontaneous question arising, allow it to arise. And as we stop our short meditation, and then you will have a opportunity to ask these questions. Om Amade Mahe Maha Ema Omae Rabaye Nadunda Zoha Om Amade Mahe Maha Ema Omae Rabaye Nadunda Oh, my, 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 my,
Okay, now you can uh, uh, begin to ask questions, those you have questions. And also, uh, yeah, I also I would like people to let us know that how many of you are listening from different places and, uh, and as a group. Hi. So, uh, um, yes, yeah, so uh, there are a few couple of questions. So the question is here is that if a person is feeling very lonely and uh, uh, seeking for a relationship and so question is uh, what what is what is one is trying to control but uh, the I don't think that specifically that particular situation person is trying to control anything um, person is feeling genuinely feeling lonely, genuinely feeling seeking for a connection, a relationship. And so, but when you feel pain, 
of feeling lonely or feeling you can say you can feel lonely you can feel a lot of feeling sense of deep lonely but very painfully lonely then you have to address this in a different way so first of all most important thing is to recognize that you are feeling pain you recognize acknowledge that you don't do anything out of that pain you don't make decision any out of that pain you don't take any step out of that pain you rather you trying to acknowledge and be aware of that pain and host allow be kind to that pain be we what we say give a spacious luminous warm hug to that lonely person who needs the hug who gives the hug is you can give the hug you can be that sharab chama you can be that wisdom loving mother to do that so when you do that you feel that you found somebody you found the best person you found yourself and through this that you are really lonely and it only is to t- trying to find yourself not somebody i mean in a from dharma point of view from spiritual point of view loneliness comes lack of self realization loneliness is not coming just because you did not find somebody because you you loneliness exist people who are married for 30 40 years loneliness comes people who are working in middle of 100 people loneliness arises people who live in a big family loneliness in a way has nothing to do with somebody it has to do with yourself okay so uh, second question so this is a good question so question is that when uh, we the earlier i was talking about the three different levels so if when you when you realize that the my pain is not caused by somebody not even together but it's just me i'm creating it so how you would not judge yourself how i will not judge myself well it's probably very difficult uh, not to judge yourself uh, so so uh, but Oh, earlier we talked about it how to, what to do how to recognize it recognizing is not uh, judge for example the word judging what ju- judging is has something to do with the grasping mind judging has something to do with the conceptual mind judging has something to do with the thought judging has something to do with the opinion judging has nothing so much to do with awareness consciousness luminous so what we are encouraging here when you feel when you recognize something like that it's just it's just like a being aware of something rather than analyzing and judging something so be aware of that it's just me not thinking that it's me so which is i know it's kind of not easy to understand what i'm just just said or i'm saying but it is not easy to understand fully what i'm saying right now so and so what i just said i think those you understood something i think you enjoy it those you did not understanding understood something i think then you can think about oh there's something to be understood there maybe i hope i wish i will understand so i think it's not not easy to explain that so the simple answer is uh, judging has something to do with conceptual mind here we are saying be aware not conceptualize that means we we are encouraging not to judge but just be conscious okay the third question so the question is the practice of sharab chama so is it like a sharab chama is a deity or is somebody coming from outside it's also it's our 
Buddha nature or it's our own wisdom, what it is? Well, it depends. You tell me what it is. You see how many people are listening. I am sure there are some people, some of you are experiencing a presence of Sharap Chama so vivid probably more stronger than the people around you. You feel the Shirap Chama is very much, very much with you than the people around you. And you feel the presence of Shirap Chama so strong that you're, you're feeling your own emotion, thoughts, and that kind of, kind of not bothers you at all. And others, you might feel that maybe not connection at all to Shirap Chama, but maybe you're feeling some sense of more uh, quietness and calmness and some sense of openness, some sense of awareness that is kind of helping the situation and illuminating your pain this moment. Maybe that's what you're experiencing. Maybe some other people that you're really feeling that you're not feeling the presence of Sharap Chama, neither you're feeling presence of your own inner wisdom, but you are feeling of help so much with this webcast something coming out of your computer screen, for example. <laughs> or you are feeling that your friends around you who are helping you there at this moment, or a friend who brought you to that practice helping you. That's what you're feeling. So the question is, which one is the correct one? The answer is all of them are correct. And particularly, each one of you are experiencing your, the answer is you have your own answer with each person. It might be different for each other, but for you, that is right. The question is how do to how to proceed uh, when one is awakened with a pain body and stuck. That is a contradiction. When you are awakened foot with your pain body, you are not stuck because you are awakened. You are not stuck because you are free. You are moving. You are flowing. So uh, when you awaken, you are not stuck. Okay. So the question from Ligmicha, Spain is um, when you are fully aware of somebody else's pain and you're feeling some space and warmth toward that person, what is, what, is, what, what is the best thing to do? Is it the, what is the best thing to do? Apolli? So when you are being aware of somebody else's pain, and when you're feeling warmth toward that person, that means, clearly that means you are feeling already enough space and enough warmth. The big question, what should I do or not? That's a very difficult question to answer because if somebody is fully awake of wake enough, then what to do might be very clear or what not to do might be very clear. But when you are not fully or not enough awakened, enough conscious, you might feel that you need to do something or you should stop doing something. And when you listen to those, maybe they are not coming out of your awakening. They are coming out of your unaware, subtle, deeper layer of another pain making a, a good decision. It's like, a, or it could be a smart ego, which was kind of gone away and hidden coming back and in a different form and trying to give you advice to do. So of course, it's a difficult question to answer, but each time 
you would have some sense, good sense about, about it. So we will conclude our questions and answer here. So before I end, I just want to say a few words. Um, you know, sometimes we often we think about, you know, um, I, I love somebody, therefore I have to grasp somebody. Uh, or somebody, some people say something, uh, I have to feel I'm in pain because I'm responsible. So do you have to be in pain when you're responsible? Or do you have to feel pain when you love somebody? No. So the pain, you really don't have to um, grasp somebody when you love somebody. When you don't have to suffer when you take responsible on something. So I think that sometimes uh, people sense a misconception about, you know, like uh, uh, being responsible to, is to suffer. Uh, being uh, to love somebody is to grasp somebody. It's not. In, in a way, it's opposite. When you love somebody, you don't grasp. You allow. You give a space. When you are responsible on something, you don't grasp. You give a space. You give up a, a multiple possibility to happen what you're trying to make happen rather than one single possibility option of happening which is you with your pain to make it happen that does not work many times we do that i am responsible i need to control it i need to do it i need to do it my way i need to do it therefore it is i i i'm i'm taking responsible i'm doing a good job we think that way but that's we know many many times how many times we we witness that's not true when we do that, you don't do a good job because options are less. When you open more options, more skills, more people, more possibility are created by just giving space, by not controlling by one person or one pain, or which is really like one person is more like one pain in situation. Uh, very often, we, we all wish very much sometimes when, when you start with something, a very good intention, like a social service, like a, a pure love, pure service, pure intention, pure actions. We start with many times in our life to do those, to be coming from those places. But as it goes on, we begin to feel pain. We begin to feel conflict. We begin to hate somebody. We begin to hate situation. Eventually, we begin to hate ourselves. Why we end up there? Why we end up with a lot of pain, conflict, and hate? when we intended to do something right, something good, something pure, as a service to others or the situation, or even Dharma, Sangha, community, why we end up there? Because we are not able to distinguish our pain and our intention. So it's important to distinguish our pure intention, not mix up with our ego and our pain. And when we do recognize sooner than the later, so then you will always, you know, your service matters most. Your pain and your ego and your identity does not matter so much. Sometimes it's good to humbling yourself. Uh, of course, we, in independent tradition, we put some sense, we say, like, put yourself down. Of course, those who hold, those you're already doing, you're putting yourself down without knowing you're doing down, then I don't encourage you to do more when you you know what you're doing. But when you know when you're putting yourself too higher, which, which is not correct, be conscious as a play, as a game, as a magical display of wisdom, put yourself down when you're able to put yourself too high up and see how does that feel. It's you're choosing it. You choose yourself to humble yourself, put yourself down. You choose, you allow, give, give space to somebody else. You choose, give acknowledgement to somebody else. You choose, give opportunity to somebody else. You choose to, to give credit to somebody else. You choose, that's your strength, not weakness. So, uh, so some, sometime I think it's important to, to just feel by giving away how much you gain, 
by giving a giving away how much feel joy then trying to get or protect or control we don't feel so much joy we don't feel so much gratitude we feel more pain we feel the uh, how you say suffering of trying to control or trying to keep something that's not fun place to be in life so that's the last uh, message and so i hope this uh, webcast was beneficial and um, and um, until next webcast uh, i wish you all the all those who are participating in this web webcast uh, send you my greeting my love my blessings and uh, my prayers to all of you in whatever you're doing in your life whatever your challenges that you're facing your your life my prayers and wish are with you all thank you Oh. Uh -huh.